All right, what's going on guys? This is Rob and uh, I have a theory here. <laughs> Outside of just some observations, there really isn't a whole lot to like back this up, but I do want to know what you all think about it. If for no other reason than the fact that you guys do what you always do, which is just shoot down my theories. But uh, <laughs> let's talk about Cthone and Dormammu, potentially Mephisto, Nightmare. Let's talk about these demonic beings that likely exist in the MCU. Well, that's not the most accurate statement. We know Dormammu exists in the MCU because we saw him, and we know Cthone exists in the MCU because Wong referenced him, right? Remember like in Doctor Strange 2 in the temple scene, right? Uh, Wong was like, you know, Cthone, the first demon to ever practice dark magic, basically constructed this temple. So here's the thing, right? We know from Doctor Strange 1 that Dormammu is a multiversal entity, right? Like there's only one Dormammu seemingly across the whole multiverse. That seemed to be the implication there. There was nothing to indicate that Dormammu existed in every universe because the way that it was explained by the ancient one and then seemingly the way it unfolded with Stephen Strange, is that Dormammu inhabits his own universe, right? The Dark Dimension is in and of itself its own reality. And then, honestly, I think the Splinter Realms exist in the MCU. And just as, as a haphazard guess, with no factual evidence to support this, I think the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to kill off the idea of the negative zone and they're going to replace it with what is basically the demonic dimension is essentially what it is, right? The dark dimension and all that stuff. Now, the dark dimension may very well be its own thing. The negative zone is its own place. The dark dimension is its own place. However, there are huge differences here. So in Marvel Comics, every universe has its own dark dimension. It has its own version of Dormammu. And in fact, in the Ultimate Universe, which is what most of the MCU is based off of, Dormammu literally killed Doctor Strange Strange the first time they fought. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was the funniest thing. But at the same time in Marvel Comics, what you also have is the negative zone. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what that is, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, like it's an antimatter universe and so on and so forth. The important thing for this video is that there's only one negative zone and every universe can access it. In fact, depending on how long you're in the negative zone, you can encounter other versions of yourself from across the multiverse who may also be exploring it as well. But the negative zone's colossal and it has its own denizens right annihilus and all those guys and that kind of a thing uh and so maybe that's what they're doing with the the dark dimension now again they could be just expanding the dark dimension out to where it's only one universe among the entirety of the multiverse but here's the reason why i say i think this is happening right why it's kind of a big deal here a lot of it just goes back to how things ended with dr strange 2 that what we ended up seeing really in uh, over the course of the movie and dealing with the dark hold is that wong had largely talked about the dark hold basically being a copy that in essence Cthone had constructed the temple that existed in Wondergore Mountain and then basically put all of his information involving dark magic into the temple and then that temple was or at least the, the writings were essentially copied and they were put inside the Darkhold now by one way or another that ended up spreading across the multiverse so there ended up being one Darkhold in every single universe now, I would say that this is largely Marvel kind of restructuring the origin of Cthone to a degree, right? We've talked about this before. The origin of Cthone in Marvel Comics is that he was an elder god, that in essence, when the Earth first came into existence, that the sentience of life on Earth, basically, right, its biosphere, uh, ended up spawning a whole bunch of elder gods. They all descended into madness, more or less, just became evil, sort of practicing dark magic, and Cthone was one of the only ones left. This basically led to the creation of the Demi-Earth also known as a tomb, who essentially destroyed all the different elder gods and those who weren't killed fled to their own individual realms, Cthone being one of those. He basically fled to what's called the Flickering Realm. This basically led to a tomb merging into the sun and then becoming Amun-Ra, who basically sired all the Egyptian gods as we know them, Bast and you know Khonshu and so on and so forth. Kind of a neat way to tie all those things in together with what we've seen in the MCU so far, right? Now, here's one of the things that could be going on. Assuming Amun-Ra and all that stuff from Moon Knight is just its own thing that exists out there and has no tie or involvement with Cthone or anything like that, which is possible, but also not possible. What we could say here, what we could really surmise is that if Cthone really was a being that somehow found its way to what we would call Earth 616 or the main Marvel Cinematic Universe wreaked havoc for a time, it's entirely possible here the very first Sorcerer Supreme, basically Watum, ended up 
battling uh, Cthone and then banished Cthone to his own realm. And then in turn, what was left of Cthone was essentially just the writings that were there, that were made available. And before his defeat or whatever it is, that Cthone had transcribed those writings into the Darkhold and then sent them out into the multiverse. The reason being because much like in Marvel Comics, Cthone is always looking for a way back into the main Marvel universe itself. And those individuals who start wading into the waters of the Darkhold, having no idea what they're doing, can provide a vector for that to happen. The other part of this is that Cthone was basically just waiting on the Scarlet Witch. He was waiting on Wanda. And then in turn, he could use Wanda as a vector to re-enter the realm. That's entirely possible here. But the reason why I think this matters and the reason why it's so cool is because as you guys remember from Doctor Strange 2, when the temple of, of Cthone was destroyed, all the dark holes across the multiverse were destroyed as well. They were all eliminated. And seemingly what happened here, and this is kind of the crazy thing, this is one of the reasons why I kind of speculated in the last video that, that we did when we were talking about the incursions, why the dark hold is seemingly tied to it, is because when that dark hold in basically evil strange, right? When his, when that dark hold was destroyed, his reality basically seemed to return to normal, or at least started to go back to being to normal and stop disintegrating. That seemed to be the case. I don't know if that's true. You know, I don't, I don't know if that's definitively the case. Been a few days since I watched the movie, a little bit murky on the details there, but the fact remains that this is entirely possible that what's going on here is that essentially Dormammu and like Cthone, Mephisto, if he exists, Nightmare, who most likely exists, they exist inside the dark dimension. And the splinter realms are all effectively a part of that. So for those of you guys who aren't really familiar with that, again, we had explained this before as well, that basically the dark dimension is not just a giant landmass by which Dormammu rules everything. It's not like that. Instead, what it is, is it's the dark dimension with Dormammu basically controlling a huge section of it. But within that, you've also got smaller dimensions, right? Smaller little places. So think of it akin to how like Asgard is a dimension that you can access in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but you have to have the Bifrost to do it. It's, it's pretty much the same way. Imagine Earth is the dark dimension and Asgard is the realm of Cthone, right? You can't just go there, right? You can't just like get on a ship and fly there. That You actually have, kind of have to access it through like dimensional means. But the important thing here is that it's likely inside the greater dark dimension. The other part of this is that it could just be one of these things where like Dormammu rules over everybody, right? Cthone and Mephisto and Nightmare and all those guys, he's like the big dog on the block and they're all just kind of existing there in the sense that like he's the emperor and they're all just like governors more or less right i mean it's a very terrible analogy in relation to the kind of people that we're talking about here you know governor cathone <laughs> you know peter parker three but nonetheless you know it's just it's, it's one of those things i think it'd be cool i think it'd be a great way to take what is or could potentially be this really really complex and convoluted concept and narrow it down now, another way to really look at this, and this really seems to be indicated by Clea, because when the portal opened at the very end of the movie in the post credit scene, that it looked like the dark dimension on the other side, which makes sense because Clea is basically the niece of Dormammu, the daughter of his sister Umar, and she's ridiculously powerful, and was at one point the ruler of the dark dimension after Dormammu's defeat and when she beat Umar. And so because of that, it's possible that, like, Dormammu is basically representative of all of them. And that's one of the things that we'd also talked about as well, that there is no Mephisto, that there is no nightmare or anything like that, that it's all basically Dormammu. But what we saw in the movie seems to contradict that, that Cthone definitively exists now. We haven't seen him yet, but he's been referenced. And I would have to believe that Wong would know the difference between Cthone and Dormammu and would know if they were different or the same beings. <laughs> I have to believe that's the case, but I'm curious what you guys think about this, right? Do you think it's entirely possible here that what's going on is that the realm of Cthone and the realm of Dormammu and all those guys are all basically in the same place? Or do you think that it's just one of those things where it's kind of off doing its own thing, right? That it'd be kind of weird to say that like Cthone rules his own, his own universe and that Dormammu rules his own universe but it could just be a more expanded version of what exists in the comics. That instead of uh, Cthone existing in the flickering realms, that literally the flickering realms are an entire universe unto itself. And that's one of the things to know about the multiverse of Marvel Comics. Not all universes are equal. That some universes are smaller than others, and other universes are bigger than others. For example, the Negative Zone is several times larger than the main Marvel Cinematic Universe. Other universes are a little bit smaller. So it really just kind of varies. So it's entirely possible that like Dormammu rules his own quote-unquote universe or realm, which exists out there 
kind of independent of any other universe in the multiverse, but it's not the size of a traditional universe. It's smaller, right? So, you know, it's it's a starter home, essentially, you know, is what it would be. But unless, you know, let me know what you guys think about that. I'm very, very curious to see what your all stance is, because I feel like this is a very real possibility. I mean, we know he exists. The big question is, where is he, right? Maybe it's just one of those things where his spirit just inhabits the tomb and he doesn't exist in a universe anywhere, right? I mean, at that point, we're just, it's, he was literally just waiting on Wanda, right? His spirit is quite literally literally just sitting in Wondergore Mountain, waiting to be freed by some poor sap who ends up coming along, accessing the Darkhold, happens to be the Scarlet Witch, and it's just the perfect means by which he can come back. <laughs> I don't know, right? I mean, that would kind of seem to be the case that Wanda accessing, really being the only one to be able to use chaos magic in the way that she can, that she's the perfect host for Cthone. That's one thing to know, right? I mean, there's a lot of elements from Marvel Comics that are being borrowed from here. A lot of you guys may look at that and you may say, okay, but like if Wanda's the Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange 2 showed us that in effect, Wanda always becomes a Scarlet Witch, maybe not necessarily the evil Scarlet Witch, but like she essentially always gains powers as evidenced by the alternate reality version of herself that was possessed. Because remember at the end of the movie, when she was stuck out there where the uh, Book of the Vashanti was when it was destroyed, that alternate reality version of her like when possession was over she looked up like what in the hell and then just flew back right to her reality so it's not like wanda only has powers in the earth 616 marvel cinematic universe she's got her powers across every universe and for those of you guys who are looking for an explanation of that that's just the concept of the phoenix that's all that is right it's literally the marvel cinematic universe borrowing the notion of the phoenix force modifying it and then applying it to wanda in the sense that the phoenix force is an omniversal entity there's only one phoenix across the entirety of the multiverse and even though there are essentially an infinite number of Jean Greys, the Jean Grey from the main Marvel Universe in the comics is the perfect host for the Phoenix. It's why only she was able to attain the White Phoenix of the Crown position as opposed to any other version of Jean Grey across the multiverse. So it's really one of those things in Marvel Comics where it's like that particular Jean is more powerful or more in tune with the Phoenix Force than any other version. And maybe that's what's going on with Wanda, right? That version of Wanda in the Earth-616 Marvel Cinematic universe is the most powerful version of Wanda across the multiverse, or she's the one that's the most in tune to be a host for Cthone, whatever the case is, right? It's one of those things they borrow from comics. You got to roll with it until we end up getting some other explanation beyond that, but it's a cool little tidbit there, right? I mean, there's a lot of possibilities with Cthone. So here's what I want, right? Give me your wildest theories about Cthone in the MCU, right? Let me know what you guys think, because I'm, I'm really excited for this guy's appearance. He, you know, he's going to show up somewhere along the line likely in Doctor Strange 3, but let me know what you guys think. But with that being said, we're going to bring this to an end. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you all later. Peace.